Hello, thank you for joining us. My name's Katie Hopkins, and I'm so thrilled to be here in Helsinki in Finland, for those of you that don't know, um, and to be joined by you. Although I have to say, everybody in Finland, as per, is extremely good looking. And it's distressing to me that this happens to be the case. This is going to be a live stream. We'd love you uh, all to join us. Um, if you're on this right now, please do share with your friends, maybe retweet um, the, uh, the link so that other friends can join us. Now, would you like to tell everybody your name and your title, your job here in the parliament? Yeah, my name is Laura Huhtasaari. Well, in English, it's pronounced Laura. Mm. And I'm a member of the parliament here and I'm a vice chairman of my party and we are now here in the F Finn party's room. This is it. This is, it. <laughs> this is headquarters of the Finn party. Yes. And outside, just to give people a sense of this parliament building, it's a massive imposing building, isn't it? As you walk up the steps, you really get a sense of you are sitting in the heart of power. Yes, it is. It is very important to keep the power to the people, to Finnish people. And I appreciate this building. is It's built on 1930s and it's amazing, I know. Now, one of the things I wanted to do, if it's okay with you, um, I just want to tweet the live link so that more and more people can join us. I think it's really important that people can hear your message. Is that possible? Can I get you to hold this for me? Of course. And I'm going to see if I've got the link. And yes. then I'm going to tweet it. Yeah. Do feel free to you know, explain to people what you do here. Uh, Monday to Friday. Are you always here? What's your job? What does it consist of? Whilst I tweet this. Okay, well, it's important to tweet so we can get the word out. Well, uh, I'm, I'm doing the no normal job, what the member of the parliament does, if that's any normal, and the days are different. But uh, I sit in a committee and I join the plenary sessions, and of course I always remember to put the Finland people first. <laughs> that's my... That's my goal. That's perfect. Um, right, so please join me now on this live link. Live stream. Should we change that to live stream? I think we might. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for bearing with me while I did this. My tech skills were not what they probably should be. So that's done. Okay. Uh, so people can find us on Twitter. They can find you and hear about more of what you've got to say. Now tell me, why is it that in the middle of Helsinki, uh, in this huge parliament building, why is it all of a sudden there seems to be a whole lot of people. Why is there a whole lot of journalists? Why have I suddenly heard from the Prime Minister today for the first time? Why have I heard the President speaking today for the first time? What are they speaking about? What's the main problem for an outsider that's just hit Finland? What's the big story? Well, the, we have the same immigration problems that everybody else in Europe, but unfortunately, Politicians just put their, they blind their eyes, they, wanna, they don't want to hear about it. But now that because of the activism of, of citizens, it has come out that we have these grooming gangs. And it's very sad. And at the moment, now the, uh, all the parties are meeting in closed doors that now we need to do something changes because, of course, in uh, immigration, uh, if, if you want to change the crimes of immigration, we need to change immigration policy. So now they are talking about it, but in the closed doors. So, but what I'm expecting is that we have to take it out to the plenary session, that we can speak, uh, that everybody can hear, openly everybody can hear, and we have to remember what they have said before. And we do have elections coming, as you know, yeah, the doorstep are in three months away. So, of course, now they're saying that we are going to make some changes, but first you have to vote for us. Yeah, and this seems to be, thank you, this seems to be one of the things that we've uh, noticed. So I've come out here uh, with my partner in crime, Elizabeth savditch Wolf, and the reason we came is because you could feel the, the sense that there was a problem here. You could feel that there were men preying on Finnish 
children. We had emails, we had messages from people who feel that no one's speaking about it. The media seem to be complicit in the silence. Other political parties, of course, just very quick to call people like me a Nazi. I'm sure you get much of the same. And then all of a sudden, of course, we're here and now it's hit the press that this grooming gangs in Olu and here in Helsinki as well, more cases on Friday and then three more cases again. Um, it's starting, it feels like the tip of the iceberg. What I noticed is the Finns party has been talking talking about this for a long time. Would you say this is something you've been trying to warn about for quite a while? Yes, well, we are the only alternative in Finland for immigration policy, and we want our con border control back. We think that we want this asylum circus. I would call it asylum circus, because if you apply asylum from a safe country like Sweden, you're not in a need of safe. You are already in safe, and also before that, before you came to Sweden, you were already safe. So, and what we have been warning about it for years and years, and our chairman, Jussi Hallaho, or, or like 15 years, he has been writing about it, and now it just happens exactly that he has said. Wasn't it as well that your prime minister, I better keep hold of this, like, that your prime minister, didn't he stand outside his large luxury house and say, oh, migrants are so welcome, oh, refugees are so welcome here, you could have my home if you want. Didn't your prime minister actually come out and say all of that? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And, <laughs> and now he's saying... Mm. We've got a problem. We're worried about it. So yeah. take that back. Yeah. Um, and also, uh, you know, with your prime minister, I think it's massively hypocritical. I think there's so much hypocrisy. I've also heard in the city hall yesterday in Olu, um, a representative of the city mayor, the head of the administration there, a guy called Ari, uh, said that, well, actually, no, statistically, it's only one in five men that are actually foreign-born, that are actually migrants that are attacking our children. Four out of five are actually Finnish men. But statistically, that's incorrect, isn't it? Because, of course, statistically in the population, it's a very small number of migrants overall that commit a disproportionate number of offences. This is what the Finns party has been trying to warn about, I think. Of course, the over-representative, this is what it's all about. And that's why we should talk about the problem and not kind of diminish the problem talking about something else. We have a problem here. We have an immigration problem here. Uh, they are doing crimes. They are hurting our children. And we should stand up and protect our children. I want my country back. I want my safe country back for my children and all the f children in Finland. Now, yesterday, Ari, this guy who represents the mayor in Olu, who seems to be about as useful as a chocolate teapot. I don't know how that translates into Finnish, but we'll roll with it. Um, the mayor in Olu, they seem to say, oh, but we have a duty to the international community, that the world's children are our children, that I care as much about the children of the world as I do about Finnish children. Surely that's not what Finnish mums and dads are telling you. We have responsible of our own children. We have responsible of our own citizens. And did every single leader in the world would say that my people first and Finland first and every single leader would say that this would be a great place. But the only thing we can take care of is the people near us. And that's why we have a na national states. And I love nation states. And that's what EU is trying to take away also. Yeah, from you. And why is it people refuse to be honest about this problem? Why is it people refuse to say, actually, this is, and in the UK, my specific example, majority Pakistani Muslim men that are raping our daughters. I was uh, reported to the police for saying such a thing. Um, they investigated whether I could be prosecuted for speaking the truth. Do you find the same thing here? Is it too much political correctness in Finland? Is that why, why are the other parties not speaking out like you have been? They are cowards. They are cowards. Uh, we have twisted attitude and the media is is they, I think it's in their constitution to make nationalists, their image bad and all their motives are bad and, and you should definitely not protect your own people and be this idealistic multicultural is richness as all kind of nonsense they are talking about. Which, which is definitely not true. We, we should talk about the truth, we should talk about real, re realistically. Yes, yes. And that's why, that's why I think that they are cowards. 
And I was happened to be at the, well, I didn't happen to be, I went specifically with Elizabeth, uh, my colleague, to the court today, the district court. I wanted to see the names on the court list, and again, disproportionately high representation of Muslim men, or certainly there was a Somali interpreter there that had to help those charged with these serious offences, which is on your Finnish taxpayers as well. But one of the things that happened there, and it, it was an off-the-record conversation with a very senior, very senior senior member of your police force, he said uh, he thinks these cases, there'll be more and more of them, this is the tip of the iceberg, and he also said he thinks the other politicians are covering this up for political gain. Do you think that's fair? No, I think it's terrible. It's it's terrible. I, yeah. mm. I, they just don't have the courage to stand up for children and stand up for Finnish people and they don't have the courage to make the effective and concrete changes. We could do that, we could easily do that, but they are not ready to do it. They now just want to look worried, so don't be fooled. Their elections are coming. So uh, we, have all, we have concrete, we have very good immigration policy, and that will be effective when we are able to do it right. Mm. And I think there's this, this uh, it's the same uh, double standard I see in the UK. So I would, for example, be called a Nazi, I'm called far right, I'm called every name under the sun, that's fine, Islamophobe. I can accept all of those names if it makes anybody feel better. Uh, but in truth, people come up to you in the street and say, keep going, well done, please keep speaking for us, please keep speaking out because we can't, we're silenced. Do you find that same thing here? Are you called some of those names, but do you find that actually real people or real mums and dads, they want the sorts of things you're offering. They need the policies that you want to bring in. Well, the atmosphere is full of fear. Yeah. Their fear of their jobs, yeah. Their, yes. yeah, their fear of their families, yeah. their fear. And that's why they are quiet and they try to just mingle on and hope it goes away and then secretly say, hey, you're doing a good job. Yes. Please, yes. please, yes. <laughs> make Finland great again. <laughs> Yes, and I see that. I've walked around earlier. A, a, a member of your team was kindly just showing me around. I've seen so many people come up and just say, keep going, keep going. And do you see, it, it feels like, you know, the press, they won't represent those people. They're not really giving the voice of the people, are they? They're, they're calling you labels because they want to make you a monster. You are not a very effective monster looking at you. You, see, you don't seem like a monster to me. Well, all the nationalist parties are not monsters. They're actually fighting <laughs> for their countries, and I really much appreciate that, and that takes lots of courage, and, and it would be easy. It would be so easy to say, oh, I know, <laughs> I know, we have room, everybody welcome, multicultural is richness, you know, it would be so easy. But those people who have the guts to fight against it, they are actually the only hope we have. Mm, I so agree with you. We went to the migrant shelter, the refugee center, asylum center, whatever name you want to call it. It seems that Finnish taxpayers are actually paying 300 euros a head uh, for a single parent. They're paying 200, 199 euros a head per child. And that's cash in hand because they get their accommodation for free. They get their food for free. Pr presumably the Finns party has a position on how many migrants you would accept at those kind of rates on the taxpayer. Well, that's the part of the attractiveness that uh, we are keeping up. So, of course, they will come, you know, and we, we can't blame the people. I mean, of course, they want to seek better life. But as politicians, we should put the limits. As politicians, we should put the, the rules. Mm -hmm. And uh, according to the Dublin rule, we could have sent all the asylum seekers back. And that would be only a smart because it has cost already us billions of euros, billions of euros. It's a terrible price. Uh, and adding all the human uh, tragedies we have had here. And is that the Finns party position? Is your position you would send asylum, se asylum seekers back? What's your position on the migrant quotas and the EU quotas? What's your position on that? Well, I think that every nation state should decide how many they want to take and, and what they want to take. Do, do they want to take children or families or just young men? 
you know it, it, the one who helps should be able to decide where who are we going want to help and definitely keep the power to the nation state and at the moment we want to reduce the number of huma humanitarian immigrant we want to reduce it very very almost zero yes and that's directly in contrast i think to other parties who i've heard of red material I've, I've seen online the other political parties have been campaigning to increase the migrant exactly. quota to increase the number of migrants is that is that a fair position to say that the other parties were campaigning to take more migrants of course and they are and and finally when we get to be able to deport some somebody they, they are preventing it. They are going there, stop <laughs> deportations. You have the feminists on the plane <laughs> taking their clothes off to keep the migrant on the plane. And it's like, it's your daughters you are hurting with this. I know, and this is illegal. <laughs> this is legal. You know what? He, he doesn't have uh, asylum status. So what are you doing? But they are trying to prevent it. They want everybody to stay here. And they, they just don't, I don't know. A feminist in Finland, are they as disappointing as feminists in the UK? They are the hugger migrant brigade. They are the ones that are put the migrants before our own daughters. Is that similar here? I call them feminazis. But anywho, do you have that problem here that the feminists campaign to keep migrants have more migrants? Well, the feminists, I don't think they anymore have anything to do with women's rights. Good, good, nice. Now, I was seeing this article today. It's in one of your tabloid papers. I was a tabloid writer, so I'm not knocking it. Mm -hmm. Can you say that for me? Uh, the headline? Uh, uh, this, uh, just the, the oh, title. Uh, this is the title, Ilta Sanomat. So it's a well-known tabloid here. Now, a striking article. This wouldn't normally happen in Finland. An article like this wouldn't happen. This is an article, a young, she was five years old when she came here, an Iraqi lady, and she is speaking out about the grooming gangs. It's an article that's been printed, which is unheard of, and she is an activist, no longer, I think, a practicing uh, uh, Muslim. Um, could you just read me the, the title, maybe um, translate it? I think something about blue eyes. Yeah. Well, it says that you should not be blue eyes. You should not be blue eyed for for the things that are happening. And and uh, well, she's talking openly about Iraq and the culture, the Muslim culture, and how they relate to women, what they think about the women, and how they treat them. But of course, not everybody. Uh, she says that, but she's very open about it. And uh, it, it might even get. I'll just show everyone prosecution for that because you know Islam is something pro under uh, protection mm -hmm. you, you could get sued or convicted if you for say something bad about it for hate speech so, so basically the the kind of the big story is that one someone spoken out against uh, grooming gangs and she said look it is part of the culture of Islam in the paper she's saying in Islam in the culture I used to know uh, women are not worth that much in some cases only a donkey is worth this is I'm quoting the lady here directly so these aren't necessarily my words before I'm locked up before I leave the country she's saying here women are worth only a little bit more than a donkey and if a woman walks around uncovered she's seen as I'm not wishing to say that my finish is great but she's saying they are free game. I mean, we had an expression in the UK, easy meat. This idea if they're not um, protected with the honor of their family, then Islam suggests they are easy meat. And that's why Muslim men here, majority Muslim men, pardon me, are preying on Finnish children. It's a real surprise to see someone come out and say this, linking Islam very clearly, as she does, with the reason, the culture behind these rapes of, of Finnish girls. Do you think this will be shocking to your voters? Do you think they know? Do you think, how do you think Finnish people will read this? Well, my voters know, and, and many people know, uh, but of course it will be sh shocking for somebody who is already blind eyes, <laughs> or blue eyes already, that they just don't want to see. So we would say, I think, like rose-tinted glasses. You know, you mustn't, yeah, so sort of blue eyes, similar thing. This idea that you mustn't be blind to what's going on. Exactly. So your voters know. Yes, yes, my word is no, but, but I, I would say that uh, at the moment now the press and media and the mainstream is talking about it, but 
when this now kind of calms down, it, it goes back to that, that we need humanitarian migration, we need migration, and it goes back to the way it was. And, but that's why it's very important to save these kind of articles and just continue all the time and doing the good work. Mm. And I think, you know, for me, she's a very brave lady for speaking out. I just want to grab her name here. Would you mind reading it? Because yours will be, your pronunciation will be far better. I think it's here and it's also here, her name. Seida Sohrapi. Yes, I actually have met her. I was, yeah, I was in the, uh, it was our studio in a uh, TV, TV show or something, and okay. she was there, and she's a very brave and smart lady. Yeah, she must be brave to be speaking out, because presumably um, the Muslim community will not be enjoying what she's written, tying Islam specifically with the kind of rape culture she has done. Mm. But have you ever wondered why the feminist never talks about the Islamic countries, about the women there, or uh, in the Muslim societies and women here? or something. Why don't I ever talk about that? It's strange, isn't it? The feminists never really seem to be on the side of women. They only ever seem to be on the side of the globalists. So there's only one narrative that's accepted, and that narrative is very much about women being covered. I think she's an incredibly brave lady. Do you think, will she be, I mean, in the UK, her, she would be in danger for saying the things she said. For example, in the UK, we didn't give asylum to Asia Bibi, the Christian persecuted in Pakistan, because our prime minister said it might upset local communities. We know what that means. Will she be safe? here. I remember that case. That, that, that's terrible. I mean, that, that's terrible. Well, I think she will. I think she will because she has said before something very good before uh, earlier. And I hope she will be. And that's why I'm in politics, that women can stand out. Mm. Yeah. I think it's, it's so reassuring and refreshing to find a woman like yourself who is on the right of politics, not being far right or a monster or a neo-Nazi. It's refreshing to find a woman who's speaking out for our daughters. You know, I have uh, girls. I have a 14-year-old, 13-year-old and, and a boy. We'll pass on him. But, you know, to find someone speaking out for our girls. Are you, are you a mum yourself? Yes, I have two daughters. It's, it also strikes me. I can't help but feel it. When you are with another mum, and I feel this way about my colleague I travel with, when you're with a mum, they really understand at an emotional level, it's going to set me off, why this matters. I know, I know. Because I think the most uh, beautiful thing that work can give you is a girl. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, I think when people read what happens to these girls, not wishing to go into specific details about any ongoing court cases, but the fact that they're used over and over by multiple men and passed around, I think it's those stories that really make you realise this is not a question of integration. Yesterday, the, the city mayor, Olu, her representative, she, I noticed she's not a mother. Um, the, the Ari said, um, well, those, those numbers aren't that significant yet, and indeed um, that we shouldn't be so worried about it because we still have a duty to these other children. But he also said that um, you know, people need to see that Finnish men do this as well, so it's not really such a big problem. It's always playing down the problem, missing the sort of mothering point, I think. Mm, it is. And do you know the saying that uh, road to hell is uh, covered with good intentions? Yeah, <laughs> yeah so, so that's what we are against. That's what we have to fight back. We have to make sure that we have to reveal that what, what they do, what they do and what impact does it have to our countries. Because Sweden, you know Sweden? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I, you don't, I don't want to follow that. Sweden should be a bad example to us and not a good example. And, and we, it's already here to see. You can see it. So if you are smart, you kind of learn other people's mistake, right? If you're normal, you learn from your own mistakes, okay? But if you're stupid, you just don't learn anything. But that's why we just have to keep going. We have to repeat. We have to repeat as many times that we will win. But I hope we will because I see some kind of turning point in Europe now. There are turning points coming because people are talking about it and they don't care when they are persecuted hate speakers or they are banned from Facebook or doing... We just keep going. We go going because we know we are right. 
I really like that kind of your your passion for that. Your your I can feel that kind of sense that you are moving forward. I always think of it like an arrow. You know, when you're moving forward and you let the criticism run off your side, you let it fall away. Do do you? Is there any time that that, that does get to you? Is there a time that that you do feel? I'm, I'm sick of all of the attacks that you maybe, I don't know if you're, your partner or your children, you ever go home and just go, oh, enough of all the unkindness when you are fighting on the side of good. Of course, of course, I'm a human. <laughs> But then uh, Matthias Turkila said me today that uh, it's good to have people that hate you because that kind of keeps you doing better, even better all the time, and you, you have to learn your mistakes, and they grab everything, so you just have to keep going, and, and you know, it's a good thing that we have to grow as a human being, so sometimes they even do us a favor, right? <laughs> they make us tougher. Exactly. I mean, I think I've given them a helping hand by just giving them loads and loads of mistakes in my life for them to persecute me with. I'm sure your life has been far, has far fewer mistakes in it than mine, but um, I, I really admire that attitude of yours as well, of being Uh, taking the criticism, taking the unkindness, uh, taking people, you know, I've seen people say, well, you're going to talk to Katie Hopkins, who's next on your list? And, and naming some, you know, atrocious people. I love the way I you're able to come myself. back. I already named, I said Jordan Peterson, I hope Paul Watson, but <laughs> let's see. Who would you like to have here in Finland? Who would the Finns party like to chat to? Who would be helpful? I don't know, Nigel Faraz, I like him. You like him? He has bad teeth. I have bad teeth. He has even worse teeth. <laughs> Now tell me, you talked about this tipping point, this sense that Europe's changing, this sense that actually people are waking up. Just give, give us a little sense of why you feel that way. Is it the other parties? Is it the Swedish Democrats? What's making you feel that this tipping point is here? The uh, national parties all around Europe. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's what is making it. Yes, because this sense that you're growing. Yes, exactly. And, and also I think Trump made this turning point and I would have voted for Trump I mean I, but you know media has made him a liar because he's he made a promise and kept a promise but he's the liar right <laughs> I love this now listen as we come to the end of this interview which I've so enjoyed I really want to make sure um, that you've had time without me talking where you're just reminding people what it is the Finns party stand for why it matters what's so important what's your what the key message that you're saying I think I got a part of it earlier which is about putting your country first which I so believe in I'm a proud nationalist myself I believe in putting British people first uh, putting your country first strong borders tell us Uh, tell people of Finland, tell anybody who's watching out there that might want to support you as well or, or even criticize you because I think you probably welcome that. What's the key message? What's the priority for the Finns party here in Finland? Well, of course, I want to uh, protect our industry and our jobs. I want to have people to have jobs, to be in the safe country and I want them to be able to vote. That, that vote makes a difference still that if you vote, you can actually influence your own life. That's what I want to do. So I want to hold on to the nation state. <sighs> I think we just need to import you, just as we go into the kind of Brexit nonsense this evening in the UK, I feel like I want to take you home with me and go, listen, she knows about democracy. She still wants our vote to count and to mean something. And I'm guessing that on a personal level, having seen people in the street come up to people in your party and yourself, you've got mothers and fathers emailing you, asking you to keep going. I really get this sense that you have that people's voice that you're, you're speaking to, people asking you to keep doing what you're doing. That's true. That's right. That's right. They do. They do support me. Like I said, that many people say that I cannot support you in publicly because you know I will be attacked or it will be something which is terrible, which is terrible. But but they do support me in secretly. <laughs> I think you have much more support than you realize. And I think your numbers are really good at the moment as well, aren't they? Are you 10.2? Is that right? 10.2%? Yes, it's, it's rising up. And what's the target you want to get to? Well, of course... We want to make Jussi Halla our prime minister, but latest at the 2023, but we, we do it this time, we, we make best right now. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to me. Thank you so much for being um, honest about the problem you have here in Finland with grooming gangs. Um, thank you, I think, for doing that for such a long period of time. I'm watching them all out there now. You know, they're just turncoats. So the, the prime minister that offered them his house 
and then actually rescinded that offer because he realized it might be a bad idea. Uh, he's now saying, you know, he's the one saying, oh, we must do something about these grooming gangs. But you guys have been there consistently through and through. You've had a consistent message. And I think just the, the thing I would take away from our conversation is that as a mum, you really get it. Like you, you really get it. And as a mum, I think mums are going to be on the front lines, have been on the front lines against grooming gangs. And you are the woman and the Finns party is the party that will stand up for our daughters. So um, I wanted to say thank you very much indeed for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. It thank you. Thank nice you. you. Oh, it was so nice to meet you too. And so thanks very much for joining us here on this live stream. Um, I will tweet the link again and we'll tweet it for people to catch up with after. Um, but I'm sure both of us would like to thank you for joining us and uh, for engaging in our conversation. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.